When news broke out that Apple was in serious trouble, many people didn't believe it, saying that Apple would just pay a few billions in lawsuits that it faces, and that's it. Well, as it turns out, the largest company in the world faces far more serious issues than anyone thought, and these lawsuits have the potential to completely destroy Apple. Finances, reputation, market share, even survival – everything is on the line for Apple. Moreover, Elon Musk came out and stunned everyone when he revealed a very important reason why he is no longer using and abandoned Apple forever. This is a very interesting story, so let's explain it. Any company fighting against 350 lawsuits will run thin on its revenue sooner or later. Yet for a tech giant and a moneymaker like Apple Inc., this is just another day in the office. With impressive breakthroughs in its name, Tim Cook's establishment has also earned a bunch of lawsuits from competitors and, surprisingly, its consumers. Not to anyone's surprise, those lawsuits are criminal for the company's revenue. For example, French app developers sue Apple over App Store fees. Apple's monopolist and monopsonist power over the iOS app distribution market violates federal and California antitrust law according to a class action lawsuit filed in a California federal court by three French iOS developers. According to the plaintiffs, Apple has willfully acquired total control of the iOS app distribution market, resulting in a supra-competitive distribution and in-app purchase fees levied on developers who are forced to rely on the App Store. First off, these fees, which have helped Apple earn billions of dollars, hurt developer sales and profits. According to the petition, Apple has little incentive to change its ways because of the lack of competition, which stifles innovation and quality in the iOS app market. The petition also states that Apple's dangerous and aggressive monopolization or abuse of power has stifled the competition. All three plaintiffs seek pecuniary and injunctive relief on behalf of themselves and the French resident iOS developers against whom they are suing. This case in a US court may result in fundamental shifts in the iOS app distribution which appears to favor the tech giant. Other market regulators have concluded the same thing while investigating the company's App Store policies. Alternatively, as one CEO also stated in the petition, when someone signs up for a product in the App Store, they are no longer customers of the product they are signing up for. Instead, they are essentially Apple's customers. They pay Apple, who then pays the customers back. So all the years, money and reputation building for a customer goes to waste and is, instead, handed over to Apple. In the end, Apple still gets paid 30% for the platform it provides. The plaintiffs are represented by Hagen's Berman Sopal Shapiro LLP, which obtained a $100 million settlement for US-based iOS developers who has in turn challenged the App Store's pricing and purchasing policies last year. There are three petitioners. Society de Figaro is a Paris-based company that created Figaro, iOS news app. Another one is the 24B24 Team SAS, the developer of the Le Equip sports streaming and news app based in Boulogne, Ballancourt. And lastly, a Paris-based association of online content publishers, Legiste. Despite their disadvantages, all three petitioners agree to Apple's monopolistic App Store policies to gain access to American iOS markets. Even though they are French, these developers participated in the iOS app market as purchasers of Apple services in the domestic marketplace of the United States. And so, their petition is based on both federal and state antitrust law. According to the petition, the iOS app store is the only way for iOS apps to be sold to iOS device owners. The developers rely on it even if its policies disadvantage them. The plaintiffs argue that this is the only way for developers to sell their apps to the millions of users who use them. Also, according to the petition, a closed system is exclusive by design, which means Apple consciously determined that it would shut out the competition in native app distribution using the App Store. According to the petition, Apple's market dominance is far from innocent. It intentionally monopolizes the distribution of iOS apps through improper means. Plus, because it is the sole seller of iOS networks to developers by design, it acts as a monopolist. On the flip side, Apple claims that it has purposefully blocked competitors from distributing iOS apps to protect device customers from bad apps and malware. The petitioners disagree, claiming that if given the opportunity, reputable vendors would provide a reliable distribution network. Another argument they made is that Apple is not qualified to be monitoring and shaping security, especially since its engineers have stated that the App Store's security protocols are inadequate. Fleeceware, apps operating covertly from the store, have generated at least $365 million in revenue. 
Even in cases of similar fraud, Apple may inadvertently pocket the 30% commission. Moreover, a £750 million claim has been filed against Apple for alleged battery throttling. After being accused of misleading customers about a power management tool, Apple Inc. is facing a lawsuit in the United Kingdom that could result in hundreds of millions of pounds in compensation for iPhone users. Justin Gutman, a market researcher, has applied for a collective action lawsuit on behalf of UK iPhone users in front of the Competition Appeal Tribunal. If successful, the suit could ensnare up to 25 million people who purchased iPhone models, ranging from the 6 to the X. According to the lawsuit, Apple informed customers that software updates from late 2016 improved device battery life when, in fact, they quietly throttled it. Gutman claims that Apple hid the power management tool in the updates to conceal the fact that the phone's batteries couldn't handle the new software's processing demands, which resulted in shutdowns and glitches. An undocumented battery management system, released in a January software update that year, slowed the performance of older iPhones to prevent them from shutting down unexpectedly. However, Apple did not provide users with the option to disable the setting and did not notify them that their phones were being throttled on purpose. In response to these claims, an Apple spokesman said that they will never program a device that will shorten the life of a product or degrade the experience for a user. Apple acknowledged the throttling almost a year after it was introduced, stating that it only slowed down phones with older batteries that were running low on energy or were cold, all of which can affect battery performance. According to the company, if a battery is in poor condition, it won't supply the maximum current required by the phone's processor at full speed. Before the update, this would simply cause the phone to shut down, and the update was intended to allow the device to continue running, albeit at a slower pace. In Italy, the company was fined 10 million euros, while Samsung was fined 5 million euros for a similar program. In the United States, the company agreed to pay $25 per iPhone, with a cap of $310 million in a class action lawsuit settlement. Furthermore, Apple will pay $50 million to settle the butterfly keyboard lawsuit. The keyboards, which were introduced with the 2015 MacBook, were notoriously unreliable. Any type of grime, crumb, or dust could cause a key to stop responding, resulting in embarrassing typos. The proposed settlement still needs to be approved by the judge, but the end may be in sight for those burned by Apple's unreliable keyboard design, which the company discontinued in 2020. If the settlement is approved, people who have had their butterfly keyboard repaired should be eligible for a payout if they live in California, New York, Florida, Illinois, New Jersey, Washington, or Michigan. But users residing in any other state won't be affected by this settlement. People who received at least two top case replacements will obtain the most money, while those who obtained one or more keycap substitutions will receive the least. If you only get a single top case replacement, you'll be in the middle. The estimated payouts range from $50 to $395, depending on the number of people who sign up for the settlement. It's also worth noting that up to 30% of the $50 million will go towards attorney's fees, with the remainder going towards other costs and expenses. Those sums won't be enough to buy you a new computer if your current one still has the butterfly keyboard, but depending on how many repairs you've had, it could knock off a sizable chunk. The agreement also ensures that Apple's extended service program, which covers your keyboard for four years after you purchase the laptop, will remain in effect. So if you have a computer with some broken keys, it may be worth investigating. Apple didn't respond when asked to comment on the proposed settlement. According to the agreement, Apple has not admitted any wrongdoing in the butterfly keyboard scandal, and it is unlikely that they will ever do so. Moreover, Elon Musk has been opposing Apple Inc. since Epic Games filed a lawsuit against the company over Fortnite. Epic Games claimed that Apple was illegally monopolizing the market by taking a 30% cut of every sale through its App Store, which it accused of being an unlawful monopoly. Elon Musk tweeted that Apple's App Store payment system was a de facto global tax on the internet. He had also slammed Apple for creating a walled garden of tech. Elon Musk also stated that he has stopped using Apple News. In a recent tweet, Gerber Karasaki Wealth and Investment Management's president and CEO Ross Gerber announced that he had cancelled his Apple News membership. Gerber called the news app a major source of negativity in my life. Same, wrote Musk to this tweet. That is it for today. 